If you've taken an introductory psychology course, you probably already have a general idea of what psychology is about and what its goals are. To sum it up quickly though, there are four main goals that general psychology has. These are to describe behaviors, to know what is normal and abnormal, to explain why behaviors occur, to predict behaviors before they happen, as well as to change behaviors, to make constructive and lasting changes to people's lives. Cross-cultural psychology adds on to these general goals of psychology by focusing on context, the context that people live in, and it asks the question, does these variables or do these things change as a function of culture? Meaning how people behave, how do we predict people's behavior, and how we can change people's behavior, do these things differ depending on the culture you live in, depending on the culture you look at? So you can say that the goal of cross-cultural psychology is to understand cultural variability or what is different in the different cultures that exist in the world. And it accomplishes this through research, through science. It answers these questions the same way general psychology does by employing a systematic process of gathering, analyzing, and interpreting data. Now, research can mean a lot of different things. We'll be covering research methods and different things you need to know about research as it pertains to cross-cultural psychology in another unit. For now, let's just talk about a few limitations when it comes to psych research in terms of culture. The first of which is missing data. So, most General psych research relies on what we call weird samples, or in other words, samples that are considered Western, educated, industrialized, rich, and democratic. When we talk about psychology research being weird, what we mean is that often the results of many studies are based on limited samples, samples that are typically college educated, come from Western cultures, are very white, very affluent. Now, you can imagine this is problematic for a lot of reasons. Now, looking at data collected around 2010, what it has been found is that around 80% of study participants come from weird societies. Again, societies that are very Western, educated, democratic, etc. So roughly 80% of psych research has participants coming from these societies. However, looking at the makeup of the world, we know that these types of samples, this type of demographic, only makes up 12% of the world's population, which means the majority of research is based on only 12% of this slice of the pie. And what this means is we're missing roughly 88% of the picture. Now, this is fine. It wouldn't be a problem if, for example, the majority of ways people act, think, and behave are the same across cultural contexts. If people act the same, think the same, feel the same, no matter which culture they come from, then it doesn't matter that we're getting this small piece of the pie. However, as we'll learn throughout this course, there are differences in the way people think, act, and behave based on their cultural context, based on the traditions, norms, and values, and environments that they were raised in. So the fact that the majority of research is based on such a limited sample is really a huge deficit in many psychological studies today. Now, what cross-cultural research tries to do is fill in this blank, right? So cross-cultural psychology builds on the foundation that psychology as a general field of study sets. Psychology, and any field of study, is about building a body of knowledge, right? No matter which ology you're going with, that this study of a topic is about building a body of knowledge. In terms of psych, it's about building a body of knowledge of how people think, act, and feel. Being able to describe that, 
being able to predict it, and etc. What we add on as cross-cultural researchers are lenses that look at cultural differences, whether any of the things we found in other psych studies might vary as a function of culture and how they could be different in different societies. But as you can probably guess, studying culture is difficult for a lot of reasons. Just a few of them, for example, is that even when you're looking at a cultural context within a certain culture, we know that not everyone in that culture is monolithic or are the same, in other words. So think about Midwest culture, right? We often say Midwest culture is like this. It's about people who are very generous, who are maybe conflict avoidant, who say like, oh, sorry, and things like that. Um, but not everyone in Midwest culture is the same. For example, people from Wisconsin might be different from people from Minnesota, even though we might lump them together under this shared cultural context. Another issue is that cultural boundaries aren't distinct and are often unclear. When we talk about, let's say, Asian American culture, right? Um, what distinguishes who counts and who doesn't count as Asian American? Or thinking about Midwest culture, what counts as people who are Midwest or not Midwest? Is it strictly that state boundary or is there some fuzziness around that? Can you live on the border between a Midwest state and a not Midwest state and still be considered someone from the Midwest? And lastly, cultures change. When we study culture, right, culture is not something static that stays the same the whole time. But it's something that can vary, that grows, that evolves, that changes over time. So another thing that makes culture difficult to study is that it's constantly changing, it's evolving. Imagine what the U.S. looked like 50 years ago, 100 years ago. What you could say about U.S. culture then would be different from what you could say about U.S. culture now. Cross-cultural psychology is about the study of thoughts, feelings, behaviors, actions, and how they vary across culture. There are a lot of reasons why we might be interested in this field of study, but one of the reasons is because our samples are very limited. And because our samples are limited, we don't have as much certainty that our results that we find in these psychological studies generalize to other cultures. So cross-cultural psychology fills the role of studying how we're all different, what is variable among us, as well as what might connect us, what are universals, what are things we all share. I'd like to end this video by asking you to think about other reasons why you think we should study how culture shapes the way we think, act, and feel.